Hi everybody, finally got on the right side this time so I can still be here and do this properly. So what I've done is again I've drawn the subsidy diagram here on the right hand side and I've looked at all the different impacts we can analyse just from this diagram. So let's get moving. Let's start with the impact on price. Well remember from my previous video how the price doesn't change. The effective price that domestic suppliers get has increased but the actual price in the market stays the same. Okay, so unchanged at PW. That's important. So the price remains at PW. Domestic demand, unchanged, because the price stays the same. So domestic demand, unchanged, remains at Q2. Yeah, so price PW, the domestic demand is Q2. That's not changed. Domestic supply has changed. It was initially Q1, now with this subsidy and more supplies in the market and effectively with a higher price because of it um, domestic supplies increased, it's, it's increased to Q3 so it's gone up, so it was Q1 now it's all the way to Q3 okay so that's a good thing for domestic supplies, what about the level of imports, the quantity of imports have actually fallen before it was Q1, Q2, the difference was being imported now it's only the difference between Q3 and Q2. So the quantity of imports coming into this country has decreased from Q1, Q2 to now Q3, Q2. That's the idea behind it. If we're having a look at revenues now, well, initially, domestic producers, what were they getting in terms of revenue? They were only getting A because they were selling Q1 and they were just getting the price of PW. So they were getting A. Now, they're selling more. They're selling all the way up to Q3. And the effective price they're getting is PW plus sub. They're getting the price of the world with this subsidy on top. So PW plus sub times by all the units up to Q3 gives you A plus B plus D plus E plus F. It gives you this big box of revenue now. Okay, so domestic producer revenue has increased from A to a plus B plus D plus E plus F. Big increase. And a lot of that is the subsidy. Foreign producer revenue, well before, the imports coming in and therefore how much foreign producers were selling to this nation was the difference between Q1 and Q2 at price PW. So before, foreign producers were getting B plus C. Now, the quantity of imports actually fallen, so foreign producers are now only selling Q3, Q2, the price stays the same at PW, they're only getting C. Okay, so foreign producer revenue has fallen from B plus C to now just C, so there's a fall there. For these guys, they're losing out. There is a cost to the government. How do we work out how much it costs the government? Well, the value of the subsidy is important to work out. The difference between the two supply curves is the value of the subsidy. So this black line there. That vertical distance, the difference between the two supply curves, is the value of the subsidy, and that's being given on every unit produced by domestic supply, so every unit up to Q3. So you times that vertical distance by the quantity being uh, uh, produced by domestic supply, so between, if you want to call it, naught and Q3, and that gives you the box of D, E and F. So the cost to the government is D, plus E plus F. Vertical distance times that uh, quantity value on the x-axis there. And what about the deadweight welfare losses? Well, we said there is no deadweight loss of consumer surplus. Um, why is there no loss? Because there is no change in the price. Hence, there is no loss of consumer surplus like there normally is. But there is a deadweight welfare loss in terms of world efficiency, and that is F. Okay, so F represents deadweight welfare loss in terms of inefficiency, domestic producers producing extra units when they're not efficient at producing and therefore shouldn't be producing it. Okay, uh, that's it guys. Thanks very much for watching this video. You have the detailed analysis there. <coughs> so if you had to use this diagram in an essay, you now know how to do it properly and how to analyse both axes very, very well. Um, so that's it when it comes to trade protectionism and policies on the diagram. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.